10 Thumbs Blues Challenge, day 8 of 15. You're doing fantastic so far. Great job getting this far. Free tabs for everybody pinned in the first comment of the comment section. If you like those tabs, think about becoming a Patreon. Today, we're going to introduce two concepts. One's really easy. It's called a quick change. And then the other is the arpeggio. That's right, folks. A brand new form of rhythm once again. We'll break it all down. Okay, so quickly, an arpeggio is just playing the notes individually. So if you were to make a D7 chord, for example, and finger pick it, this is a type of arpeggio. But we kind of, in general, we call this finger picking, and we distinguish that between arpeggios as being a little more linear. So this is also an arpeggio. And that's what we're talking about today. So we go ahead and throw these tabs up and let's play a D7 arpeggio. Let's play through it first and let's break it down. Second fret of the C string, second fret of the E string, fifth fret of the E string, third fret of the A string, fifth fret of the A string. Two, two, three, I'm sorry, five, three, five. And you can play it just with your index finger. But I'm a big fan of the economy of movement and trying to keep things a little more condensed. I'm gonna play the second fret with just one finger. Now I can get that fifth fret with my pinky, third fret with my middle finger, fifth fret with my pinky, and back to the third fret there. One and two and three and four. We're playing only eighth notes, so we're going to go one and two and three and four and. This last one's going to ring out for the four and the and. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, now, if you're looking at these tabs, though, we're seeing these numbers above these chords, or above these notes. We're seeing something that says root, third, fifth, flat seventh, root, and flat seventh. These are intervals. An interval measures the distance between two notes. So we've established D as our root, and all these other numbers are measuring the distance between this D note and the other note. The first one is a third, and the third is one, two, three, four frets away. So this is a D, this is an F sharp. This is also an F sharp. So you have your root, and your third is one, two, three, four frets away. The next one we have is a fifth. Now, I know it's you think, well, shouldn't a third be three frets away and a fifth be five frets away? But it's because we have a flat second, second, flat third, third, fourth, flat fifth, fifth. A lot of these numbers have two intervals. So that's why it's not as easy as just going fifth interval is five frets. So a D to a fifth is one, two, three, four. There's our third. There's our fourth, flat fifth, fifth, our A note. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frets to get to the fifth. Only one more note, the flat seventh. So we'd have si flat six, six, flat seven, right here, the C note. And that one is 10 frets away. It's much more, in terms of the economics of movement, much easier to keep this condensed in these shapes. So we have two, two, five, three, five, or root, third, fifth, flat seven, root. D seven, D, F sharp, A note, and a C note. D, F sharp, A, C. We're just taking the notes in the chord and playing them, spreading them out like that. Rhythmically, you can do really cool stuff with this. And I guess I'm using more fingers here just to make it a little easier. I'm going to go use my index for those two, ring on the fifth fret, index on the third, ring, index. 
One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Well, one and two and three and four and. Okay. Now, real quick, before we look at the G arpeggio, we're going to do something called a quick change. And a quick change means the second measure is no longer a D7, but it's going to be a G7. This is fairly common because the first four measures, when they're four measures of D7, can be a little static and a little boring for some people. So sometimes you make the second measure the four chord, and this is called a quick change, just to give some movement. So after one D7 arpeggio, we're going to get to a G7, and we're going to strum down, down, up, up, down. And then two more arpeggios. So go ahead and play, let's go ahead and play these first four measures first together. Four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. One, two and, and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Boom. Ooh, okay. So let's go ahead and put up the G arpeggio. We're gonna see that the shape 7, 7, 10, 8, 10, it's the same shape. This dominant 7 arpeggio can move laterally. All you have to do is find the root on the C string. So we have a G note here, and it goes 7, 7, 10 on the E, 8, 10 on the A. Root, major third, fifth, flat seven, root, flat seven. Same thing, pretty cool, right? So for these first two measures here, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna play the G7. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Back to the D. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Then we get to the turnaround. Now, <clears throat> these arpeggios, you're gonna find them in different places on the fretboard and you don't necessarily have to play them from lowest note to highest note. The turnaround, if we're looking at it, we have two arpeggios for the A7 and the G7, and then the turnaround. So let's start with the A7 arpeggio. Fifth fret here, that's our root note. Then we're gonna go five, four, five, three. Root note, major third interval, root note, flat seven, then the fourth fret here on the C string, which is the E note. So this movable shape, you would find the root on the E string, and it goes root three, root, flat seven, five, one, and two, and three, four. Okay, now, if we want to make it a G7, we would simply find the G, third fret here, and plug in the exact same shape, three, two, three, one, two. And that makes sense, because you're probably familiar with the G chord, right? And the G7. It's just combining these two and playing the notes one at a time. One and two and three, four. You put those together. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. Boom, our turnaround. Now our turnaround, should look familiar from lesson number seven, but it's gonna be slightly different. One, we're gonna do this, two and three and four and one. That's similar. And this is similar here, but you just don't recognize it yet. Three, four, five is the same as O, one, two. So that triplet that we did, we're just doing it here. And then we're gonna make a G shape, just like a G, but right here. When we strum through this, we're actually playing a G7. And does anybody know why? I'm gonna go ahead and do, 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 do. If you know, leave a comment. Do, 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 do. Boot, boot, do, 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 do. I bet you the Jeopardy would be a pretty fun song to learn on the ukulele. Okay, the reason why is because when you take our A chord to make an A, a G, an A7, you add a flat seventh interval, which is a G note, G string. 
So we're taking an A chord, root, third, fifth. We're getting that G note right here. So we're gonna go triple it, doom, triple it, three, four, and then we're in the top. So let's go ahead and play through the last four measures together. One, two, three, four. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. One, two and three and four and one. Two polar three, four. Into the top. All right, let's put the whole thing together. You ready? All right, so after the introduction of the scale, you can see that the heat gets turned up a little bit, but I know you can do this. Just take your time with it, okay? If one element is too tricky, for example, if you can only do the D7 turnaround, strum with the G7. By now, you know how to modify some blues 12 bars, so you can make it easier for yourself, okay? I'm gonna count us in, but I'm not gonna count while we play. So let's go ahead and take it from the top, all right? Here we go. I have the tabs, I'm looking at them. Um, I got a music stand, makes life a lot easier. Go ahead and grab those tabs, all right? One, two, three, four. On the turnaround, I accidentally missed the G string. All right, but that's it. All right, so you got it, okay? All right, thank you so much for rocking it with us, and we'll catch you in two days for the next lesson. You are doing great. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. You. I'm proud of you. Yes, you. No, not him. Not her. You. Proud of you. Great job. A deeper understanding of music in general. I think that's kind of what an arpeggio gets at because it's not only improving your rhythm, it's improving your ear and it's improving this concept of intervals. And at the core, an interval is like, in terms of music theory, an interval's the atom, right? It's the smallest tiny little piece that creates everything. And scales, they have a recipe and it's a recipe of intervals. Um, chords, they have a recipe, it's a recipe of intervals, certain intervals, react with certain chords to create certain sounds. This is tension and release. This is resolution. This is melody. All of these things, all at the very, very most finite piece is an interval. And arpeggios definitely get you started to having a deeper understanding of this concept. All right, great job today. And I will see you in two days for the next lesson. Have a lovely day. Life is good. Rock and rollio.